Hey there, I'm Steve Pasquale, and on behalf of everyone at DCC, I want to welcome you today. Please consider saying hello in the chat window and tell us where you're watching from. It's really encouraging to hear from one another when we're watching during our weekend gathering time. We're really happy that you've joined us. So this week, we kicked off the first Wednesday of our new midweek Bible study, and it was really great. So every Wednesday evening for about 30 minutes, Pastor Brad will be leading us through the book of 1 John and in a conversation of how to grow closer to God. It's also a great way for us to connect with our fellow DCCers throughout the week. So join us on Wednesday evenings from 8 to 8.30 p.m. You can join in on the conversation or you can turn off your mic and video and just listen in. If you were here last year at DCC, you may remember participating in the Be Rich series. Be Rich is our annual series focused on entirely serving the others who live and work around us. At DCC, we truly value serving so much. This morning, Pastor Brad will be sharing the heart and details of our new Be Rich focus, and he'll be followed by our other favorite pastor, Joshua Simonette, who will be sharing another amazing serving opportunity for all of us at DCC. Finally, we want to thank you for your giving. Your generosity emulates how the early followers of Jesus invested in the work of their local church. Your giving allows us to be God's hands and feet in our community. During this season of participating in Be Rich, we are even more awed and grateful for your generous gifts that go above and beyond your regular giving. Thanks so much for being hashtag for Dulles. Again, we're just really thankful and happy that you're here with us. We love and miss you all. And don't forget to say hi in the chat or click on the connect button below. Love is wide and it covers us. His love is fierce. 
fierce, his love is strong, it is furious. His love is sweet, his love is wild, and it's waking hearts to life. His love is deep, his love is wide, and it covers us. His love is fierce, his love is strong, it is furious. His love is sweet, his love is wild, and it's waking hearts to life. Hey, DCC, so I have been excited for this weekend, probably for a month now since Josh and I started brainstorming about this. Last year, we here at Dulles Church partnered with North Point Community Church in Atlanta and all of our 78 to 80 uh, other partner churches around the country in a campaign called Be Rich. And those words, Be Rich, come from the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy in Scripture. I'm going to read that for you here in just a minute. What we do is we spend about three to four to five weeks collectively as a whole group of partner churches all around the country, focusing on really the same initiative, inspired by the words of the Apostle Paul. So I'm going to read these few verses to you uh, as we launch this today, this focus of giving and serving. Uh, from 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 17, the Apostle Paul says to all the rich of this world, he's actually writing to the affluent in the early church, to those who consider themselves blessed by God and able to give back to those who are struggling or under-resourced in certain ways. To all the rich of this world, I, com I command you to not be wrapped in thoughts of pride over your prosperity or to rely on your own wealth, for your riches are unreliable. And they're nothing compared to the living God. Trust instead in the one, the one who has lavished upon us all good things, fulfilling every need. Now, here's the key verse in verse 18. Remind the wealthy. He says to young protege Timothy, Paul says to Timothy, remind the wealthy to be rich in good works of extravagant generosity, Paul says. Be rich in good works of extravagant generosity, willing to share with others. This will provide a beautiful foundation for their lives and secure for them a great future as they lay their hands upon the meaning of true life. So this is how we put this into practice here at, at, at DCC. It's really a three-legged campaign or approach of intentional focus on others. One is a, a focus on love, like walking out, practicing love, personal love for someone else. Another is serving, and then the third is giving, giving of our financial resources. And this is a call to everyone, to every one of us. Uh, this is uh, not intended to be just kind of the core or maybe the 20% the who you know, kind of show up and volunteer um, early and stay late. This is for every one of us to participate in. And for those of you who watch outside of the Dulles area, you know, those in California who watch regularly, Florida, Arizona, Ohio, uh, other, other places, Connecticut, you can easily, I, maybe I shouldn't say the word easily, but with some creativity, I believe you can find nonprofits around you 
during this one month focus that we're giving here in the Dulles area to show up for a couple of hours in the serve leg of this campaign. So for those in the Dulles area and those outside the Dulles area, the love challenge is really for all of us. We're challenging all of us in this coming three to four to five weeks to give intentional focus to loving someone who looks different, speaks different, uh, prays different than you, and maybe even who votes differently than you, and to take time to just express love. Now, this isn't to be weird. This is not to be, uh, you're not going to do something unnatural. This is maybe uh, a neighbor that you run into and that you really just don't spend a whole lot of time to. Maybe you wave to once in a while where you have an opportunity by the trash can or the mailbox to spend time 30, 45 minutes really getting to know them more as your act of love. Maybe it's an invitation to your backyard for a barbecue or a note that you write someone. If you're open to this, God will show you how to express love. This year, we're really intentionally focusing on each of us expressing love in the coming month to someone who may look different than us, speak different than us, uh, vote or pray differently than each of us. And I believe God will, will use that to build friendships and really to just show more of the love of Jesus. Here's the second leg of this Be Rich, this Be Rich focus for the coming month, and that is to serve. Here in the Dulles area, we're going to propose two serve opportunities. And again, if you're outside the Dulles area, be creative, do some research uh, online, and find a nonprofit near you where you could give two hours. That's really what we're looking at here is giving two hours of volunteer time. If you have kids, look for an organization where you can involve your kids in the volunteer time. Here are the two projects we're presenting to you for the Dulles area. The first is the Dulles South Food Pantry is, is beginning this week to collect toiletries for families uh, in area school systems here, in our area school system. And the final collection date will be October 3rd. So you've got a couple weeks here. This is a way to involve kids, uh, go to the store to be creative in ways where it opens conversations as a family to you know what we have and how we're provided for and the blessings that we have and how we want to give back and we want to make sure that others are taken care of. So the first is providing toiletries to the Dulles South Food Pantry, which will be collected October 3rd. We'll give you details in the days and weeks coming up about that collection point. The second opportunity is with the Salvation Army. Here locally, we're gonna have two serve opportunities from 9 a.m. to noon on October 7th and from 9 a.m. to noon on October 8th. Either one of those serve as choices for us to serve at the Salvation Army boxing food for recipients in Leesburg. We're gonna share updates about this in emails. I'll briefly in the coming weeks mention this and give you updates and reminders uh, in our weekend gatherings like this for these two serve options. You're gonna find all of this on our website. Here's the third leg of our Be Rich Focus this month. And it has a lot to do with our great friend, Joshua Simonette. Joshua became a part of the teaching team that we're building this year here at DCC. He spoke for me three times in July. We've been great friends for about 14 or 15 years now. He's been a pastor in and around the D.C. area and just recently moved. He and his family moved a little bit north. He'll tell you that story in his talk here in just a few minutes. He has started a nonprofit that I am so excited about, and he's going to present an opportunity for us to financially give. Some of us may be able to give $20 or $25 to this. Some may be able to give $250 or $500 to this. This is an above our normal giving at DCC. We're not going to touch that. We're going to keep doing that like normal. This is above that for each one of us, each one of my family members. And I'm, I'm going to challenge each one of you that we would consider giving financially to this project that Josh is going to tell us about. And it is super exciting. And beyond this particular opportunity to invest in this new nonprofit, I believe today is really the start of a partnership between Dulles Church and the organization that Josh has started. And I'm just looking forward to, from today on, many, many, many opportunities to be involved, to actually show up and serve and help, to be part of the creative development of this organization even. So uh, 
I'm excited for this day because it represents a lot of what we're going to be doing, I think, with Josh in the future. I'm so honored to present now Joshua Simonette, who's going to share his heart and something God's leading not only him to do, he and his family, but I believe all of us here at Dulles Church. And then I'll close us out here in just a little bit when Josh's talk is over. Enjoy. DCC is so good to be with you all again. I am super excited to share with you guys again. It looks like me sharing with you guys is going to become a regular thing. So uh, if you're not mad about it, I'm definitely not mad about it. Uh, Pastor Brad asked me if I would come back and I would share about the work that we are doing in Baltimore. So I'm excited to invite you guys into the work that we are calling Blueprint. So before we do that, let me just uh, give you a little bit of context. Let's hit the rewind button a little bit. Uh, 1967, six months before Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is assassinated, he's giving a speech at Barrett Junior High School in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And there's an opening line to this speech, which is a question. And he says, what is your life's blueprint? He goes on to say, number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your worth, and your own somebodiness. He's basically trying to tell these black students how to be successful. And he opens up by talking about dignity and self-worth because these were black kids who were still facing racism, still facing oppression. And they had a hard road ahead of them to achieve equity and opportunity. Unfortunately, 50 plus years later, there are many black kids who are still facing an uphill climb when it comes to equity and opportunity. Now we can argue for some of them it's self-inflicted, but we can also see that there's evidence that it is systemic. Now, at some point two or three years ago, a convergence of things began to happen inside of me. Uh, for the sake of time, <laughs> excuse me, I will only give you two of them. Uh, first, I was definitely stirred by this speech by Dr. King. It really inspired me. But equally, I was irritated and also infuriated by this issue that I had began to study called the school to prison pipeline. You see, Dr. King was trying to give these kids school to vision pipeline. But yet over the last 40 years, many black and brown kids have been caught up uh, in the school to prison pipeline. If you haven't heard of this issue before, the ACLU defines it as practices wherein students in public schools are funneled into the juvenile and criminal justice systems as a result of the criminalization of behavior that could be handled inside of the school. Basically, school discipline has been outsourced in many ways to police officers, making it easy for young kids to have criminal records. It's a major issue, threatening young black and brown kids. Yet, no one is really talking about it. No one is even really that aware that it's an issue. And my biggest disappointment is that for the most part, the church is not only unaware, they're MIA when it comes to being engaged in this issue. Baltimore is unfortunately a fertile ground for an issue like the school to prison pipeline uh, to occur. So my wife and I decided once we began to learn more about this and um, we began to pray, we decided that we would do what we saw Nehemiah do in the scriptures. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with who Nehemiah was, but Nehemiah was uh, a young Jew who was employed by a foreign king. And um, he had heard about the disarray of his people, the disarray of, 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 of his folks back in his homeland. And he had heard that the city 
uh, the walls in the city were torn down. Now, when the walls in, in a city were torn down, that meant that the city was and the people were completely vulnerable. There's no protection. And it was um, it was significant for them or it was it was definitely something that they, they needed to have happen in order to be protected if they wanted to have the walls in the city. up. So, so that was a major, major thing for them. Now, Nehemiah is far removed from this. He's living a good life. He's, he's in the palace, but we read that his heart was broken about this issue. And so what he decides to do is to take a leave of absence. He talks to the king, he gets resources from him, and he decides that he's going to go build the wall back up for his city and for his people. But here's the thing. We don't read anywhere in the scriptures that he was, uh, he had experience as a builder, that he was an architect, that he was uh, trained in carpentry, or that he had a degree in city planning, or any of those sorts of things. Yet he was compelled to go. My wife and I, Erica, we don't have a lot of background when it comes to this school to prison pipeline issue, but we felt compelled to go to move our family to Baltimore to uproot ourselves from the comfort of what we had known and our, our jobs and, and our neighborhood because we felt like this was an issue God was calling us to. And so we decided to do two things. Number one, launch a nonprofit called Blueprint. Um, and our mission is to disrupt this school to prison pipeline. And the main way that we want to do this is by giving kids greater vision and exposure beyond what is presently afforded to them. Secondly, we wanted to bring alongside the church um, our church plant that we're launching in the fall of 2021 called Hope Baltimore, along with our friends and partners like Dallas Community Church. So let me tell you a little bit why all of this is so critical. One out of every three kids in the 129,000 plus kids in Baltimore City lives in poverty. Second worst in the state of Maryland. Eight out of every 10, 80% of third graders do not exceed expectations in math and reading and standardized tests. 71% of students in Baltimore are graduating from high school. That's the worst in the entire state. Here's why this matters. When many people hear about Baltimore, there's a negative uh, narrative out there. Um, the murder rate or um, the unemployment and all of these sorts of things. <clears throat> but there's a beauty to this city. You just have to come here and you have to spend time here to understand and see the potential here. But in order for the potential to be realized, we've got to grow better kids. We've got to grow kids who have vision. We've got to give them experiences outside of their context to see that there is better to be obtained. No kid chooses the family or the circumstances that they're born into. And so we hope Blueprint is an entity that gives kids an opportunity to find a way out of a situation that isn't good for them or to have greater vision than what they uh, see around them. A big part of the reason why a lot of this stuff happens is schools are under-resourced, they're underfunded, um, and without any real intervention, without any intentional intervention, without any life-giving partnerships, kids are going to fall into a situation where they don't have a chance. I think about the words of Jesus, and I really want to impress these words upon you that is found in Matthew 25, verses 35 through 40. Here's what Jesus said. He said, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him. Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison or go to visit you? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, 
whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Let me explain something to you. The kids and families that we're going after in Baltimore are the least of these. They're the forgotten about. They, they, they are castaways in many instances. And Jesus said, yeah, those are the people that you're supposed to help. Those are the people that you're supposed to go after. Those are the people that you're supposed to sacrifice on behalf of. You know, when I think about my own life and the things that I've accomplished and uh, my own exposure and education, I think about the intentionality of my parents. I think about my mother who made sure that my sister and I uh, went to diverse schools and we had diverse experiences and we experienced things outside of our all black neighborhood. And she would say, the world is not all black. And so you need to learn how to engage in different environments and with different people from different backgrounds. And she was very, very intentional about that. And then my dad, who's a reader and, and who's a thinker and a strategist and very cerebral, he would give us projects and he would give us things that would stretch our minds and that would stretch our imagination outside of, again, the context that we were in. And my parents, wanted to make sure that our worldview was expanded and that our education went beyond just the environment that we grew up in. And when I think about this particular stat in Baltimore City, where two out of every three kids comes from a single parent home, do you understand the impact of that? Do you understand that Kids in that kind of situation, the odds are already stacked against them. Who's going to intervene for them? Who's going to show up? Who's going to help them? Who's going to make sure that they're getting the education and the opportunities and exposure that they need beyond their environment? Who's going to help them escape the chaos and the trauma that many of them are experiencing daily. Somebody's gotta be like Nehemiah. Somebody's gotta say, hey, something has to be done about this. Someone's gotta leave their comforts and go and see about this problem. Nehemiah, he didn't just weep when he heard about this. He prayed. He didn't just pray when he heard about it. He talked to his boss, the king, about it. He didn't just talk to the boss about it. He asked for help. And he didn't decide to just send some resources. He decided to go himself and disrupt his own life. Now, listen, I know everyone can't pick up and move and, and disrupt their lives the way that my wife and I have been called to do but our hearts can be disrupted. Our hearts can be moved and compelled to invest and to sacrifice in meaningful ways. This is what we hope Blueprint will be able to do to provide opportunities for these young people and provide opportunities for people like you who will be compelled by this story and by this mission and want to invest. So let me tell you a little bit how we're doing this. Uh, we've already begun to partner with two um, schools in West Baltimore. Uh, and one of the, the biggest things that we're trying to do is just inspire kids and give them tangible vision through experiential learning opportunities and exposure that they ordinarily wouldn't have the opportunity to, to get through um, field trips and camps and uh, bringing experiences to them. And here's the thing, with these schools being underfunded and under-resourced, they can't afford to do this. So a partner like Blueprint coming in and helping to provide and sponsor and create these opportunities, it greatly benefits not only the school, but the students, and it has long-term impact. Now, COVID-19 has made this a big challenge for us because we haven't been able to have access to the students like we would like. So we had to pivot a little bit. And actually, I'm really excited about this latest pivot that we've come up with. Listen, we are going to launch a mobile learning lab. I mean, this thing is gonna be so dope. We actually 
this is what we did. We actually purchased recently within the last week a um, RV. It's actually a GMC motorhome right down the road from you guys in Sterling, Virginia. It's already gutted and we are going to turn this thing into like pimp my ride like back in the day. But it's going to be like a mobile classroom. It's going to have virtual reality. It's going to have um, just all kind of technology that we will we will leverage and there won't be anything like this that you've ever seen. There won't be anything on the streets of Baltimore like it. So one of the biggest tools that we're going to use to engage students is going to be technology, learning, um, uh, remote learning, like I said, exposure, virtual reality. And it'll probably take us about $25,000 um, to renovate this, uh, this, this GMC motorhome um, and, and, and get it uh, the way that we envision. But here's the thing, and here's specifically what we're asking DCC. We're asking if you guys would commit to investing 10 iPads into this mobile unit uh, as part of our technology arsenal that we want to have with us. Now, we know many hands uh, and many partners make light work and so we would love for you all to consider being one of our partners for you all to invest uh in this way and, and speaking of investment here's the thing god desires for the kingdom of heaven to come to earth it's not just for heaven no he wants it to invade earth and when you think about that think about how jesus actually disrupted his uh, he, he, himself from heaven and came to earth to engage with us, to be with us, and to ultimately be a sacrifice for us. And so this is what we believe this blueprint opportunity is about, an opportunity to invest. So I wanna thank you guys in advance so, um, for, for your uh, encouragement, for this opportunity to share, um, and ultimately for your investment in Baltimore for your investment in Blueprint and for your investment in young people. Stay tuned for some really cool updates. I'm gonna make sure you guys see what's happening. And hey, I wanna pray for us before we end. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for Dallas Community Church. Thank you for how you're actively moving in that community. Thank you for this opportunity to be able to share what we're doing in Baltimore uh, through Blueprint and our church plant, Hope Baltimore, is launching in fall of 2021. God, I'm, I'm grateful for Pastor Brad, our friendship, uh, and this opportunity to uh, connect what we are doing and connect our churches uh, in this mission together. And God, I pray that you will continue to stir our hearts and compel us to uh, be disrupted and to invest in a way that you are calling us to, even if it makes us feel a little bit uncomfortable or it's outside of our comfort zone. God, we give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, DCC. I look forward to seeing you again. And hey, stay tuned for some really cool updates. Josh, I love you too, man. I'm so grateful for you and the friendship that we've had for so long. Thank you so much for this message. And the word disturb, you even said that Jesus allowed himself to be disrupted and disturbed from uh, his normal activity. And he calls all of us to be disrupted in uh, really the call of Jesus to be investors in the lives of others. And so DCC, I want to just remind you, if you are willing to give, and I'm challenging all of you to be, to be rich in extravagant generosity is what Paul says in 1 Timothy 3, that each of us in each of our homes, we would just look at our budgets and what we can do above our normal offering, above what we normally give. Let's not replace uh, one for the other. Maybe you can give 20 or $25 to these 10 tablets. Maybe you can give 250. Maybe you and your family could actually provide an entire iPad for Blueprint. I believe we're gonna collectively meet this goal. We think it's gonna come in around $3,200, $3,400 total to get all 10 iPads. Let's just do this DCC and let's do it this week. Let's not wait, let's get online. You can go to our website and click the Be Rich project button for more information about how to serve in our two local projects here and particularly how to give financially to this blueprint project that Josh was talking about. I love this. I love that we get to do this together. 
I'll be updating you on our progress uh, by email and in our Wednesday night midweeks and each weekend going forward. I love you guys. Have a great week. I'll see you Wednesday night for midweek.